Hey you guys, you might be wondering why there are a bunch of Macs in the background, okay? These are old computers that I'm hoping to repurpose. I'm a hardware hoarder, for those who don't know. I have a very hard time getting rid of old hardware because I think that you can always breathe new life into it, especially with the power of Linux. And one thing that I've been wanting to do for a while is do a little bit of self-hosting. I wanna kinda of have my own little home server, especially with Tailscale, not sponsored by the way, Tailscale, if you want to sponsor me, let me know. Um, but especially with Tailscale being in existence now, it makes it so easy to not only self-host, but self-host and have it accessible from uh, outside your home network without exposing it to the public internet. So love, love them for that. But there's never been a better time to start self-hosting, right? So one, I want to start self-hosting or at least have backups of some of my code. So of course I have a lot of my code hosted on my GitHub, linked in the description if you want to see what I'm hacking on. I have all that stuff hosted on GitHub, but you know, what if GitHub goes down? I want to still have my code, my projects, and we have an incredible project that I help support at Charm called SoftServe. So that's basically a, a self-hostable Git server. So would love to have a uh, a little more use for that and you know dog food our own products a little bit more so i really want to self-host uh some of my git projects and then also i would love to set up a raspberry pi on my network and just do a little bit more network networking things that just kind of run in the background and of course um i want to have backups and some redundancy with my backups on the server so i think what i'm gonna do i'm using my old macbooks i think this one is from ignore the glass this had nails in it um not fingernails okay like nails for the computer but anyway i think this one is from 20 it's the same model as 2010 i think it was like 2010 to 2013 or something like that i still to this day this is one of my favorite mac models so it still has the cool thing it's like kind of perfect for a server because i actually watched this video earlier today about how laptops are the best home servers and I actually agreed with a lot of the points. I'll try and link the video in the description because I thought it was really uh, insightful. And he did a whole walkthrough of like making his own laptop, like his old shitty laptop, a home server. But what I was saying about this model specifically is that it has, um, it still has an ethernet port. So it's got like so many, so many more ports than I think it was like the retina that came after this and they immediately started like kind of downsizing the ports, but I can actually have a hardwired network connection, which is rad. And then also the fact that the battery, there's a battery in here means that I've got a little bit of, um, I think it's called an NPC. Oh wait, that's a non-playable character. But basically, uh, if the power goes out or something like that, I've got like a little bit of time to make sure that the data didn't absolutely get wrecked. So that's really fun. And I actually was looking at online to see what drives I could put into this laptop. I figured that it would require a special kind of drive because it's, um, you know how Apple is. It's like, they're very particular, but this was in that era of like Apple computers that is actually quite, a versatile I guess so this is the hard disk that was in there I had a hard disk drive and I've actually swapped it I've actually swapped it for like a very normal SSD I think it's the uh, Samsung it's literally like the Samsung internal SSDs that you buy in the store it was the exact same dimensions as this so I was like I'm just gonna like plug it in and see if it works and uh, so far it does work and in case you've been wondering, uh, it is super unrelated to all the, the, the home server things going on. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you hanging out and seeing this video. I took a little break. I'm still kind of on a little break. I'm just trying to do more things that just like make me happy instead of just like working all the time. So this is one thing that I was like, this would make me happy to have a little home server. I've been meaning to do it for so long. And then I realized halfway through that I should probably film it for you guys because you'd probably be interested in it as well. So old laptop here and then let's install it. Uh, actually, let me look at, I'm gonna do something else and see what partitions we have. I'm gonna see what partitions exist already on the disc. Yeah, it's like there's shit here. On a separate note, this big iMac here is an iMac from 2010. And what I'm hoping to do with that is I might, 
I like it's it's a nice display. It feels like such a it's I'm so sad to, to have to like get rid of it. You know what I mean? It's like I'm determined that I'm gonna use it for something. And I could use an extra display. So part of me wants to just figure out how I can use it as a display by like tinkering with the hardware instead of requiring the software that comes like with Mac OS, because I kind of already wiped that drive and installed Linux on it like a while back. That was the first computer that I actually installed Linux on. So I kind of just wiped that and uh, don't have Mac OS on there anymore. And honestly, I'd rather not. Like I'd rather just have it as a display. She's a chonker, but like, I'd rather just have it as a display. So I wanna see what I can do with that. I did watch a couple videos, people explaining what they did for that. And I think there's this like third party that basically has these boards that you can that you can put inside the iMac and that'll allow you to basically like, it'll it's like a converter or whatever, um, so that it basically will act as just a display. But I looked at, they're like 360 Monopoly dollars, AKA Canadian dollars. So that is, a decent chunk of money for just having an old iMac as your display. Like I could just buy a new display, you know what I mean? So we'll see what the outcome is with that. I was actually originally, I had set it up as a server before and then the it's just the, the specs were so bad and the, I think it's, the, it's like a known issue where like the graphics chip kind of malfunctions. So it's like not, not really the best. So I think the laptop is gonna serve me better as a home uh, server, especially given the fact that I can just replace the drive with any SSD, like that was so cool. Very PogChamp of you, Apple, for, for whoever was designing in 2013, 2010, whatever. Very PogChamp of you, congrats. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna figure out what I wanna do here. So I actually went and bought a new SSD. So this one, it should actually fit in this machine, which is fun. So I'm gonna install that just now. And then we can go ahead and install Ubuntu. And this is two terabytes. So we got the two terabytes here. And then I also got, and then I also got a, a hard disk drive as well. So I find it kind of ironic that they did like the rugged, but it's, it's, it's a hard disk drive. So like you shouldn't really be dropping it anyway. Um, so that's kind of funny, but I also got these. So what I'm what I'm planning on doing is basically velcroing this, and this is going to be a backup of um, this is going to be a backup of the drive that's in this that's like on the server. So this is just going to I'm hoping to basically like do automatic backups and maybe have it run like a malware and now like a malware scan or whatever before it backs up automatically. So ideally I can just script that out and that'll be a fun little addition to the setup. Let's talk a little bit about some of my plans for the software. So ideally, I really wanna set up a Pi hole so that it'll basically do all the ad blocking and everything for me. I also wanna monitor my network traffic on my um, local network. So to do that, I think I'm gonna be using NTOP, which I've never used before, but I looked it up and it looks, looks good to me. So I think we're gonna use NTOP and Mm, yeah, and then I also want to change my firewall settings because I don't want, I basically don't want this to have any incoming traffic at all. I want to be able to connect to it over via tail scale. So I'm going to see what that kind of entails, but I would like to have it basically super locked down. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the plan. I'm honestly shocked at how quick and responsive this machine is. Like, she's pretty snappy. She's still in really good condition. Pretty much the only reason I stopped using it is because I my um, 
the hard drive that I had installed, like that came with the machine, crashed. Like it died after I think like five years or so of me using it. And at the time, I just didn't know how to replace that. And so I basically was like slightly traumatized by that whole experience. So I felt I needed a new computer. That's when I got my ThinkPad. But honestly, I could have, I'm gonna get, she, she still got more life, you know what I mean? I could have kept using her. But that's why we will continue using her now. And I'm only doing a minimal installation for Ubuntu because I don't want any of that garbage, yo. I'm just doing a clean install on a brand new two terabytes SSD. That is actually so much more jacked than my current. I think I have one terabyte SSD on my MacBook, on my laptop, and then I've got 512 gigs on my desktop, so that's actually kind of hilarious that I just splurged on more for my home server. Cause like, but that's the idea. I mean, I will be storing more on this. I'm not gonna lie, this keyboard's actually better than my current keyboard. <laughs> There's so much, the, um, the depth, it's like so much deeper. It's so much nicer to type on. <laughs> it makes me so sad. I don't think they're ever gonna go back to that. Rip, rip nice Apple keyboards. Actually, the latest one is better than at least what it what it was for a while, or just like clicky. For a company that like has some of the best feedback, I feel like they give some of the best like tactile feedback. Um, it's shocking to me that they just like butchered their keyboard for years on their laptops. Like, who who did that, and why? <laughs> who hurt you? It's so mean. Nobody liked that. Nobody liked that. Hello again. It is so much later than when I started filming originally. So I'd actually installed, it turns out that the USB that I had uh, Ubuntu on was running on 2004. And it's now 22.04 is the latest LTS. I couldn't upgrade from, from 2004 to, to 2204 because it was basically saying that my APT was like needed was was out of date and that i didn't have like the required uh yeah like needed that dependency or whatever to like have it work properly and then i couldn't find on any forums um how to fix that so i ended up actually just uh de -ding, uh so sort of rewriting the boot making like a bootable usb with the iso file from the 2204 instead for those of you who don't know how to do that, I um, highly recommend using the dd command. It lets you just do it from your terminal. You don't need to install any extra stuff. And that's always my go-to for creating bootable USBs. So I just did that. Yeah, the first one got corrupted somehow. <laughs> and then the second one worked. So now we're actually all up to date and it's time to start installing some software. All right, so it looks like I finally have a use case for Docker. So I'm gonna try and containerize the, or like just have Docker running whatever services I want to be like running all the time on my server. I think I'm just gonna run it in Docker. I keep learning it and then I'm like, cool story. And then I never use it again. So this will be fun. So what I'm doing right now is I've set up Docker. I've installed SoftServe. Those are kind of the main two. I want NTOP installed and that's part of why I went with Docker because uh, NTOP also comes containerized. So I figured might as well. And I can also get SoftServe running in a container if I want. Uh, I just need to set that up. But I've installed Docker and then I'm doing kind of like the post install steps to make it so that I don't have to run it as root every time that I want to run Docker. So that's all working. I've officially got Docker so that I can, I don't have to run sudo to run Docker. So love that. And then I think I'm gonna bring over, I've got some, yeah, I've got some of my Git repos already on a little USB. So I'm gonna plug that in to here, get it all set up so that I've got my Git repos. And then I want to lock down the firewall so that basically they can, there can be no incoming traffic, maybe even reroute SSH to come on like a different port. And then when I want to SSH connect, I connect to a different port. I don't know how that works. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I want to lock it down pretty much as much as I can. That's the plan. You guys, I have to admit, I'm actually kind of annoyed at how well this computer is running. <laughs> like it's really fast and it isn't even that like high spec. Like it's it's only eight gigs of RAM. I mean, obviously I don't have all the, all the like, I don't really have a ton of software installed or running on it right now. So, which I'm not expecting expecting to anyway. Um, 
but still this thing had so much more life in it and I'm really glad that I'm repurposing it because holy, she's snappy. She's snappy, especially with the new SSD in there. Chef's kiss, very good. So I've successfully set up my soft serve that's being hosted on my new little server. I can access it from my MacBook, super exciting. And I wanna get a little bit more information on NTOP. Yeah, I have no idea what else I'm gonna host on there. Maybe I'll make it a media server and then I have to figure out more things that um, I need to do to make that work. But uh, yeah, let me know if you have any ideas on what I can use my little home server for. I don't think I want anything public facing. I honestly think I'll probably end up just using it for my own like file backups and stuff like that, which is not much more other than my code. <laughs> I don't know why I got two terabytes of storage, but it's fine. All right, bye guys.